Hey there, movie fans. Uh, welcome to the Blues of November. Uh, first of all, I'd like to give a shout out to two YouTubers, and uh, this is something that I like to call a double Dutch shout out, meaning that these two YouTubers are Dutch like I am. And um, the first one is Jennifer Jenny Jen seventy eight. Uh, she's a very nice person. She always leaves you know nice comments on my videos. And uh, I thought, you know, why not show her sh some support by giving her a shout out. And um, she doesn't ha have many subscribers. She only, uh, I believe she almost has 40 subscribers, which is very low. So, uh, yeah, go check her out and go uh, subscribe to her. And the second YouTuber I'd like to give a shout out to is Verdiak Kulak or Verdiak Kulak. Uh, 007. Uh, I don't know much about him. I just got to know him, uh, but uh, he has a very nice channel and he also has three videos in which he shows his horror DVD collection. So, um, and he, he, you know, the amount of subscribers is even lower, which is, I believe is 20 or 21. But um, go check them out. Uh, the links uh, to their channels are below, of course, and uh, yeah, show them some support. Okay, now the first thing, as you can see, is the uh, German box set of uh, The Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, this includes the two-disc steelbook, a collectible figure, and also a small comic book. But uh, I will show you this uh, more later on. Uh, first off, I'd like to show you some um, DVDs that I got, and the first one is, oh, glare, glare, here it is, Hard Target, uh, the Hollywood debut of John Woo. This has always been my favorite Van Damme movie, really, and um, I never actually got the movie before on DVD. I used to have it on VSS, but I sold that along with my other VSS movies, which is over a decade ago now. But, um, yeah, happy happy to have this. Uh, I, I just f completely forgot about uh, getting this film. But um, it's a great action film. And, uh, you know, this is, this is from a time when the action was real and the explosions were real and the stunt work was real. You know, none of the uh, CGI stuff that you have nowadays and it's a great film it really is and the action scenes still holds up today hard target and the other dvd is um robert a highlines the puppet masters uh story wise this movie is very similar to invasion of the body snatches um but highlines book was published uh, a couple of couple of years before Jack Finney's book, the, uh, the Body Snatches. But I haven't read both books, so I cannot tell you which one is the best. But when it comes to the movies, the first two versions of Body Snatches, uh, you know, the one from the 50s and the one from the 70s, which also stars um, Donald Sutherland, by the way, uh, those two versions are much, much better than Puppet Masters. I mean, this is still, you know, an entertaining film, but it's also a very uh, average film at that. And talking about Invasion of the Body Snatchers, I also have the latest version on Blu-ray, which is simply called The Invasion, with uh, Daniel 007 Craig and Nicole Botox Kidman. Uh, you now, of all the four versions, um, you know, you have the one from the 1950s and the one from the 1970s, like I said before. And you also have one from the 1990s. Uh, you know, it, it seems like every two decades there's a new version coming out. But of all the four different versions, this is clearly the weakest one. Uh, but I, I, you know, I, I wanted to give it another chance because I love alien invasion movies. And this was only five euros, so I could not let this go. For that price. Here's another 5 euro Blu-ray, uh, Tim Burton's Corpse Bride, uh, a wonderful animation film. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing uh, Frank and Weenie, that sure looks like fun. 
Uh, next is also a 5 euro Blu-ray. Uh, it is Dead Race 2. Um, you know, I, I'm usually not a fan of these kind of um, direct-to-DVD or direct-to-Blu-ray sequels. But uh, this one was not bad at all. And this was uh, very enjoyable, actually. Um, not as enjoyable as um, the Jason Statham version, but still, you know, it was pretty good. And this movie was also directed by a Dutchman, Roel Reine, who's um, slowly but surely making a name of himself in Hollywood. It wouldn't surprise me if he's going to make a big budget Hollywood movie someday. So, uh, yeah, not a bad film, Dead Race 2. Next is also a 5 euro Blu-ray, um, this is also a, an upgrade. Uh, Rio Bravo, an excellent western with John Wayne, Dean Martin and Ricky Nelson, directed by the legendary Howard Hawks. Um, you know, Hawks, before he made this film, he made a film called Land of the Pharaohs, which is a great underrated uh, historical epic with uh, Joan Collins and um, Jack Hawkins but that movie was uh, a big flop uh, you know, it was so big that Hawks decided not to make another film for the next four years and after those four years Hawks made a triumphant comeback with Rio Bravo and uh, he also made the two sequels after that Rio Lobo and El, El Dorado with uh, John Wayne although the they're actually more like remakes than uh, sequels, if you ask me. Next is a Blu-ray set that I wanted to have ever since this came out, but I waited for them to uh, drop the price, and I got this for 15 euros. And I'm talking about the Lethal Weapon collection. Um, you know, I, I could not, I, I still cannot believe I got this for 15 euros. It is very cheap. And um, I've always enjoyed these movies, you know, these are great action movies. I mean, let's be honest, the best action movies came from the 1980s and 1990s, right? And, um, yeah, I'm very happy to have this in my collection, finally. The Elite Weapon Collection. Next up is Sergio Leone's masterpiece, uh, Once Upon a Time in America. Um, you know, simply one of the greatest gangster films of all time, really. Uh, in my opinion, this movie is up there, along with The Godfather 1 and 2. And um, I don't think many people know this, but this is actually the third and final film in Leone's Once Upon a Time trilogy. You know, the first one is Once Upon a Time in the West. Uh, the second one is called Once Upon a Time the Revolution, which is better known as um, A Fistful of Dynamite and Duck You Sucker and then you have this one and it's such a shame that this is Leone's final film uh, because you know, you know at the time when he died he was working on a film called Stalingrad and um, I mean just imagine a World War II film directed by Leone that would have been something right but um, a masterpiece, absolutely. Once upon a time in America. I also picked up uh, Fiddler on the Roof, uh, which is a classic musical. I love watching these kind of films during the holidays, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing this. Um, you know, I haven't seen it for a long, long time. Next up is Tyrannosaur. Uh, an extraordinary film, it really is. Um, you know, Peter Mullen and uh, Eddie Marson are two of the best British actors working today. But the biggest surprise is um, Olivia Coleman. Uh, she delivers a powerful performance. It's such a shame that she wasn't recognized by the Academy Awards because she really deserved to be nominated. And. Um, you know, you, you could really feel her emotions, you know, you could really feel her um, her fear for her abusive husband. It's uh, it's an amazing performance, it really is, and an amazing film, Tyrannosaur. Uh, I got the stew book of Ted, and, um, 
you know, I really, really want to like this movie. I saw the trailer and it looks like fun and um, it just wasn't as funny as I was expecting it, expecting it to be, really. I mean, it's, uh, I, I was very disappointed, to be honest. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what else to say about it. I just didn't like it, you know, it, it, apparently it's not my kind of uh, comedy, but um, yeah, I, I didn't like it, I didn't like it. The only good thing about this movie is uh, Mila Kunis, but even C could not save the movie. Uh, next up is the steelbook of the Amazing Spider-Man. This is of course part of the German box set which I showed you earlier. And, um, you know, it's it's a good movie. It really is a good movie. But I expected more from it, though. Um, <clears throat> I do have to say that Andrew Garfield did a terrific job. Uh, you know, his character, Peter, Peter Parker, is certainly much more developed than in the Tobey Maguire movies. And um, I love Emma Stone. It's always a pleasure to watch her. My main problem with this movie is the lizard. You know, I've I've never been a fan of the lizard. I always thought that he was just a very silly and very ridiculous uh, kind of villain. Uh, I mean, there there are much more better Spider-Man villains out there that they, that they could have used. Um, my favorite Spider-Man villains, by the way, are uh, Carnage and Venom. And I know that they used Venom in Spider-Man Three. Um, but well, actually, I should I should I should better say they misused them, because the way they portray them is just awful. But um, yeah, it's it's not a bad movie. I mean, it certainly has some great moments, and you you're probably not going to believe this, but the scenes that I thought was you know the best are the scenes that does not include the lizard, and also does not include Spider Man, which is pretty hard to believe I know but I really like you know the uh, the, the story of Peter Peter Parker and the rela rela relationship that he has with his grandparents or no I'm sorry it's his uncle and aunt and uh, with his girlfriend you know Emma Stone I thought that those were the best parts of the whole movie but you know it's still a good film still a good film the amazing spider-man and here is the Spider-Man figure. Um, no, it's, it's a cool looking figure. As you can see. You know, I was expecting it to be... You know, to be made from another material. Uh, you know, like like this one, for example. This is uh, Snowy from Tintin. And, um, you know, this is a real statue. It's very heavy. Well, not that heavy. But... Um, I don't know what the material is that this statue is made of. Uh, polystone, maybe? No, no, I don't think so. I don't, I don't really know. But you know, this statue is made from a from a cheap plastic material, and you can you can actually move Spider Man, and you can move the fingers and all that. But still, you know, it is it is a very nice looking uh, looking figure. It's nice for the uh, collection, I guess. So, yeah. Next up is... Okay, that's enough. My Way, the most expensive Korean movie ever made. And it shows, you can clearly tell that this is very expensive and also very uh, ambitious as well. Uh, the story is about these two guys, one is Korean and the other is uh, Japanese. And they start out as, you know, each other's um, enemies. But as the movie progresses, they more and more become each other's friends. And um, what I like about this movie is that it's three or four different war movies combined into one big war movie. I mean, the story starts out in Korea, 
Then it takes place in Nomohan, which is on the border between Mongolia and uh, Manchuria, I believe. Then it takes place in a Russian POW camp, you know, a prisoner camp. Uh, it takes place on the battlefield of Stalingrad. And it ends up on the beaches of Normandy, which later, of course, gets uh, invaded, you know, um, um, D-Day. And when you, when you watch this movie, you get the feeling that the whole story doesn't make any sense at all. But as you can see here, it's based on true events. It's, um, it's based on the incredible life of this Korean man who um, fought for the Imperial Japanese Army. He fought for the uh, Russian army, or the uh, Soviet Red Army, I believe they're called. And later he fought for the Germans. And um, he, he, it wasn't like that he volunteered, you know, he, he was forced to fight for them, or else they would have killed him, you know. And um, he survived it all, you know, he survived the war, and he... He immigrated to the United States later on, and he lived there for the rest of his life until his death in 1992. So it's it's an incredible story that this man has lived, or an, an incredible life that this man has lived. And um, the movie is great. It's, it's really great. It's uh, Visually, it looks amazing, and uh, the battle scenes are astonishing. So, um, yeah. Great film, My Way, or The Highway. And the last one is quite possibly the best film I have seen this year, or at least it's one of the best films that I have seen this year, and that is Killer Joe, the latest by uh, William Friedkin, the director of Friends Connection and The Exorcist, as you can see here. Uh, this is a brilliant controversial, daring, provocative, um, neo-noir, pitch-black comedy. I mean, it's, you know, Matthew McConaughey, you know, I, I was never a fan of him, uh, especially in those shitty romantic comedies. But in this movie, he is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, he, you know, this is, without a doubt, the best role he has ever done. Uh, the, the story is about, well, this this dysfunctional trailer trash family who um, wants to kill the mother. I mean, the, the mother isn't part of the family anymore. You know, the father and the mother are divorced, and the father has been remarried. And they all, you, you never get to meet the mother, by the way. But they all hate her, and they all want her dad so they can get $50,000 from her life insurance. So they hire Killer Joe, uh, Matthew McConaughey, who's also a police detective. And as you might guess, things are getting out of hand. And, um, you know, the, this movie did to me what Ted could not do, and that is, it made me laugh out loud, I have to say. There's this, there's this scene that is, well, it's a scene that you will never forget. I mean, I, I don't want to give things away, of course, but the scene involves a chicken drumstick. And that is all I'm going to say. It's 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 a hilarious scene, I, I swear to God. I mean, it's... You know, the, the drumstick and the incredible performance by McConaughey makes it into, you know, uh, very memorable and, and fantastic scene. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an incredible film. It's a, an amazing film. It's a brilliant film and definitely uh, one of the best films that I've seen in 2012. Killer Joe. Go check it out. Although, I, I do have to say, it's not everyone's, you know, cup of tea, you know. Some people might get uh, offended by it, I guess. But I loved it. Great film. And that's it for my Blues of November. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for watching. Let me put that over there. Oh, fuck it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.
bye.